Uh, I'm going back to something you said earlier, Dave, in this show, which was all these new companies popped up around containers because containers introduced uh, new problems to solve. And so we needed new companies to solve these new problems. So, so let's talk about Kubernetes. Um, not a company, but a, but a project uh, <laughs> all about deploying containers and orchestration. And, you know, Kate's is the new, the new altar everybody is uh, bringing their offerings to. Um, Kate's is a good thing. Everybody says so. It's got to be true, right? Uh, so so w- what are we missing, Dave? Is Kubernetes all that? Or is it solving problems that if we weren't so reliant on containers in certain uh, situations, maybe we wouldn't really need Kubernetes? Yeah, I think the problem is, is like Kubernetes is so huge, right? What, what even is Kubernetes right now? Uh, <laughs> it's like literally a label for everything that's in the CNCF. It, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, be, it, beyond just the plain orchestration, you've got so much, right? Well, it, so, so Ned, when you and I were at, at, at KubeCon in uh, November, December, whenever it was, it was right. It felt like you got Kubernetes at the center of the CNCF and all these other projects seem to somehow revolve mm-hmm. around Kubernetes. So Dave, I, I, yeah, I, I identify exactly with what you're saying. Yeah. So I, I think the what's, what's really difficult about Kubernetes for me at least is that it's a lot of YAML. Sure. Um, everybody complains about that, but <clears throat> I mean, the, the, that's a, I guess a, a different problem. That's an application packaging problem. And there are different approaches out there looking at trying to solve that, um, you know, from a packaging standpoint, I think it's more of like where everything gets layered on top, like things like persistent storage um, and the nightmare that I described, just even trying to get that to work uh, for a very simple use case. Uh, it, it introduces a lot of complexity, which you know, does come from, you know, containers and the abstraction that we've got here, maybe being in the wrong place for, for some applications that we want to run on that. Um, I guess, yeah, the, the other thing is like, it, it, we end up building applications specifically for Kubernetes. The, the, this is what I'm seeing even <laughs> more and more now is like, people are like, well, I've got to architect this application. It's going to go big. So I'm going to need a service mesh. Yeah, I need a service <laughs> mesh. So then this becomes like this inherent thing of your application. It's like, well, I don't need to deal with mutual TLS myself because I've got Istio and like I've got this other service mesh and that's going to do that for me. And ingress management is going to happen all through Istio and this is going to happen all through Istio. And then I've got this other thing that does the storage and you become so heavily dependent on all of these things that you, you fundamentally end up locked into Kubernetes. It's, it's like networking all over again with, you know, the, <laughs> trying to avoid vendor lock-in. We're like, no, we, we, we want to always have the option to go with a different vendor. But in, in this case, we're, we're kind of heading to platform locking now with something like Kubernetes uh, and, and that you end up you know, with applications that do end up you know, very heavily tied to some of these fundamental pieces of Kube that, you know, uh, you're basically, yeah, you're building around that. And I, I don't think that's healthy. Thank you.